Kunjay Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jay Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Valla Bha Giri Varan Hari Jai Gopi Jana Valla Bha Giri Varan Hari Yashoranandana Bhajajana Randana Yashoranandana Bhajajana Randana Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Bad Padamahansa, Padrika Charja, Ashto Turh the Sri Srimad's Divine Grace, Srila A C Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Iskan BBT founder a charge Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Purujaka Charja Ashto Tarda Dashishima the Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Kijai Ananda Koti Vaishnava Nikijai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Kijai Kuntara Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Kijai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees all glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. Narayana Namaskritya Narangchayav Narotanam Devim Sarasati Vyasam Tato Jai Mudiri before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashtapraya Shabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yuttama Shloke Bhakti Mbhavati Naishtiki By regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil. And loving devotion to the Supreme Lord who is glorified in transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this 14th day of October 2020 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Canto 4, The Creation of the Fourth Order, Chapter 27, Attacked by Chandavega on the city of King Puranjan and the character of Kalakanya. Text number 4. Shayana unna damado mahamana Maharatalpe mahashi bujopadihi 
Thamev Viro Manute Parangyatas Tamon Bibhuto Nanijam Parangchayat Shayan Unna Damado Mahamana Maharatalpe Mahishi Bujopadi Tame Vaviro Manute Parangyatas Tamon Bibhuto Nanijam Parangchayat Shayana Unnad Mado Mahamana Maharatalpe Mahishi Bujopadi Tame Vaviro Manute Parangyatas Tamon Bibhuto Nanijam Parangchayat Shayana Unnad Mado Mahamana Maharatalpe Mahishi Bujopadihi Tame Vaviro Manute Parangyatas Tamon Bibhuto Nanijam Parangchayat Shayana Unnad Mado Mahamana Maharatalpe Mahishi Bujopadihi Tame Vaviro Manute Parangyatas Tamon Bibhuto Nanijam Parangchayat Shayana Unnad Mado Mahamana Maharatalpe Mahishi Bujopadihi Tame Vaviro Manute Parangyatas Tamo Bibhuto Nanijam Parangchayat Shayana Unnad Mado Mahamana Maharatalpe Mahishi Bujopadihi Tame Vaviro Manute Parangyatas Tamo Bibhuto Nanijam Parangchaya Sayanaha Lying down Unnad Madaha Increasingly illusioned Mahamanaha Advanced in consciousness Maha Arhatalpe on a valuable bedstead. Mahishi of the Queen. Buja, arms. Upadihi, pillow. Tom, her. Eva, certainly. Viedaha, the hero. Manute, he considered. Param, the goal of life. Yataha, from which Tamaha by ignorance Abibhutaha overwhelmed Na not Nijam his actual self Param the Supreme Personality of Godhead Cha and Yat what <laughs> translation now it is speaking to King Pachinabar Hishat in this way, increasingly overwhelmed by illusion, King Puranjan, although advanced in consciousness, remained always lying down with his head on the pillow of his wife's arms. In this way, he considered woman to be his ultimate life, life and soul. Becoming thus overwhelmed by the mode of ignorance, he could not understand the meaning of self-realization of his self or of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, he cannot understand the meaning of self-realization, the meaning of the self, or the meaning of the Supreme Lord. Purport. Human life is meant for self-realization. First of all, one has to realize his own self, which is described in this verse as nijam. Nijam means one's own. 
Then he has to understand or realize the su super soul of Paramatma, the supreme personality of Godhead. However, when one becomes too much materially attached, he takes a woman to be everything. This is the basic principle of material attachment. In such a condition, one cannot realize his own self or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 552, it is therefore said, Mahatsevam dvaramaho vimuktes tamal dvaram yoshitang sangi sangam. If one associates with Mahatmas or devotees, his path of liberation is opened. But if one becomes too much attached to women or to persons who are also attached to women, that is, attached to women directly or indirectly, he opens the tumul dwaram, the door to the darkest region of hellish life. King Puranjan was a great soul, highly intellectual and possessed of advanced consciousness. But due to his being too much addicted to women, his whole consciousness was covered. In the modern age, the consciousness of people is too much covered by wine, women, and flesh. Consequently, people are completely unable to make any progress in self-realization. The first step of self-realization is to know oneself as spirit soul apart from the body. In the second stage of self-realization, one comes to know that every soul, every individual living entity, is part and parcel of the Supreme Soul, Paramatma, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 15.7. Mamaya Vangsho Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatanaha Manakshastan Indriyani Pakatistani Karshati Lord Krishna says, The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal, fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six, sentence, six senses, which include the mind. One note, those of you are reading along, that comma there after eternal doesn't belong. It's been out for almost 40 years. It's not eternal fragmental parts. It's eternal fragmental parts because the idea is that they're eternally so, not that they merge. You understand? Probably we'll quote this verse for that reason. Eternal fragmental parts. All living entities are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. Unfortunately, in this present civilization, both men and women are allowed to be attracted to one another from the very beginning of life, and because of this, they are completely unable to come to the platform of self-realization. They do not know that without self-realization, they suffer the greatest loss in the human form of life. Thinking of a woman always within one's heart is tantamount to lying down with, an, with a woman on a valuable bedstead. The heart is the bedstead, and it is the most valuable bedstead. When a man thinks of women and money, he lies down and rests on the arms of his beloved woman or wife, in this way, he overindulges in sex life and thus becomes unfit for self-realization. Om jnana timurandasya jnananjana shalakya chakshu unmiritam mena tasmai shri gudame namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So sometimes we... Uh, in the course of reading the Bhagavatam every morning, one verse at a time, we may forget somewhat of the context that this is being spoken in. Uh, it's a little, a little bit puzzling as you read this translation to read this as, although advanced in consciousness, right? <laughs> I mean, it seems like he's not so advanced in consciousness. But what this is, is an allegory. And Narada Muni is speaking this to King Prachanabharishat for his own good. Who is King Prachanabharishat? He's the father of the Prachetas, who met Lord Shiva, who were busy chanting the song of Shiva about Krishna and, uh, in, in for 10,000 years. So he's not, a, you know, he's an important soul. He's an exalted soul. But he's got himself entangled in performing all these materialistic sacrifices for material goals, basically to go to heaven and enjoy like that. So when it says, although advanced in consciousness, this is directed to Prachana Bhaji. It says, you're advancing kind of, it's all. Why are you entangled in all these material uh, uh, sacrifices, which can simply result, as Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita, yatetam bhukva swarga lokam vishalam. One can enjoy vast uh, uh, amounts and categories of sense gratification in the heavenly planet. 
if one performs these sacrifices just right, you know. But that doesn't help you get back to Godhead. In fact, it's uh, negative. You become so enthralled with that that you think I'm, I'm, I've succeeded in life. But the clock is ticking. Anywhere in the material world, even up to Brahma Loka. Ah, Brahma Bhuvana Loka, Punara Avartanojana. Krishna says right in the eighth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, even up to Lord, if Brahma Loka is a place of return, means again coming into a material body. And so it's, it's futile. It's Shrava uh, Imakavalam. It's complete waste of time, as Prabhupada said in the previous purport. So he, now, what, what's happened to King Paranjan? Right? He, he, he was married. He, he, the whole seduction scene is interesting, you know, where he meets her out in the forest. You know, this is actually his, his own intelligence, a representative of this woman. And he starts praising her and so forth, and he's basically trying to seduce her, but she's actually seducing him. And he becomes completely controlled by it. It's described that. He, become, he even says, I'm your servant, you know. So we had so many lessons on that. And then, being in the modes of nature, he goes out in the forest and go, goes down into the mode of ignorance, and he just, uh, you know, killing animals left and right, no control, but cruelty, mode of ignorance type of thing. And after, you know, getting exhausted, he finally comes home, takes a bath, takes a nice prasadam, takes a little rest, and uh, he wants to find his wife. So she's now lying on the ground because he neglected her. He left for the forest without talking to her, and she's, uh, she's uh, in, in opposition mode. You know, she's making a statement. So he's so sorry, you know, and he brings her up, and, and, and it says, I, you know, I'm your servant, I'm your servant. You know, he's like that. So then everything, you know, they eventually engage in uh, sensual activities. And that's his, and now it's described in this verse, that's become his whole meditation. He's, he's simply trying to enjoy the senses, basically sex life. And uh, he considered women to be the ultimate goal of life. And in, in the purport, Prabhupada talks about how this is exactly 180 degrees contrary to self-realization, which is the real goal of human life. So Prabhupada explains that uh, the, first, the first lesson, as we get in the Bhagavad Gita, is that you're not the body, you're a spirit soul. Arjun's calculations were also on the basis of the body. Not in, in the same way as Paranjan, but he was calculating his relationship to Dronacharya and Bhishma Dev and all of these relatives, blood relatives and friends on the other side. And so he made his decision on that basis. He, he, was, he wanted to serve his own senses by not fighting, by leaving the battlefield. I don't care, I'll become a beggar, you know. That was his idea. And, and then he had an argument on the basis of the Vedas, you know, because he wants to be dharmic. So he says, yes, if I kill all these men, then the women will become unprotected, there'll be Varna Sankara, there won't be any offerings to the forefathers, people will go to hell, and I'll be, be, get all the sinful reactions, you know. So this was, his, this was his argument. Now in the second chapter, which we're studying in the evening classes, uh, Krishna told, this is called Pushpitam Vacham. These are the flowery words of the Vedas, which Krishna says, don't be bewildered by that. The so-called knowers of the Vedas, the Vedavada Rata, say that this is all there is. This is what the Vedas are all about, are these, these elaborate sacrifices for improving one's material position. But that's not the fact. Trigunya Vishaya Veda. These, these, these portion of the Vedas are dealing with the three modes of nature. You be transcendental. But to be transcendental means that you first have to s understand yourself as a transcendental being by nature. And, and, and we've forgotten that. So there's a process of yoga, bhakti yoga, which systematically uh, awakens you to the, the, not just the consciousness that you are a spirit soul, but that you're part and parcel of the Supreme Spirit Krishna. You're both persons, and your constitutional position is one of serving the senses of the master of the senses. This is one of the definitions of bhakti. Sarvopati vinimuktam, tatpadat vena nirmanam, rishi kena rishi kesha sevanam, bhakti ruchate. This is right there in the... Uh, Bhakti Rasamana Sindhu, I think just after the Anyabilashti Dasunyam verse. So what does that mean? It says that actually what it means is by engaging one's senses in the master of the with the master of the senses. Rishikesh means the master uh, Rishika Isha. Krishna said all our senses belong to Krishna. Now we're trying to engage him in our service to, for for pleasure, you know, for gratification of the senses. And that's uh, not co our constitutional position. And so it's a source of suffering. 
But by intelligence, by good instruction, Shastra, Guru, Saru, one can, he said, okay, you know, I'm going to, going to engage my tongue in chanting the name of the Lord and tasting the prasadam, my ears and hearing the glories of the Lord, my eyes and see the deities, etc. And in this way become purified. So that it describes what the result of that is. Sarva upadi vinimuktam. Now this concept of upadi is very important. Upadi, Prabhupada says, are designations, false designations that we accept. Primary is on this body. And therefore, that means I'm such and such years old, I'm such and such a race, I speak such a language, belong to this family. All of that is superfluous. It's a false designation. The soul is none of those things. It's the body that's those things. But when the soul mistakes himself for the body, then all these upadis, these designations come in. You see? And, and you, you live your life on the basis of those false designations. You know, the body is, has been given to us to really teach us that there's no happiness here. But it's also been given us to try to fulfill our unfulfilled desires from previous births. And so we're going life after life after life to do this. Until we get an intervention. I like this word, intervention. <laughs> Prabhupada said, you have to go out and chant Hare Krishna, you make them here. You be, it's our duty to bother them. You know? People were complaining. He always said in, 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 in Bombay, he would give just see how, how far you've fallen after uh, independence. You know, 20 years later, 30 years later. Uh, they're thinking that the chanting of Hare Krishna in Juhu Beach is a nuisance. And they're trying to get them to stop them from building the big temple there. If you go in there now, there's a beautiful, elaborate temple, whole grounds, guest houses, everything, schooled. But it was a struggle to get the land. Because the other residents around there, they're like vacationers or this or that, you know, people that say, we don't want this Hare Krishna stuff, you know. Early in the morning, are you kidding, you know? Just like we close this door. So, but these are people who grew up in the culture, you know, it's not, <laughs> not the people living in the Maharaja's apartment, which he often mentions. So, what happened is that you, be, you become covered, especially India is known, they took on some of the Western values, they got en enamored of that, and, and uh, you're forgetting your whole culture and the whole goal of life and everything. So that's what, that's what uh, has happened to us as well, everyone. Everyone here is forgetful and is illusioned by the, the bodily concept of life, both gross and subtle. And so the whole purpose of the Bhagavatam and the, and the chanting and everything is to, come, to cure us of that illusion and allow us to regain, revive our original nature as eternal loving servants of Krishna. And that love, that prema, is the uh, actual goal. Everything follows from that. You want to get liberated from this world of birth and death and get free of all miseries? You develop love for Krishna. You try to do it artificially by controlling the senses without engaging them in Krishna's service? You can't do it. It's unnatural. Aruha kutrena param padangada patam chadona It's a famous verse probably would quote all the time. By great austerities, a very few going off to the Himalayas, practicing the pranayama and the pratyahara, can maybe rise up to the Brahman platform, you know. But it's like a sensory deprivation uh, tank. I don't know if you've ever experienced it. I haven't, but I know what it is. Where you go in there and you're, you're, li you're almost weightless, and the temperature is exactly comfortable, matches your bodily temperature, and there's no inputs, you know, and you're just uh, floating in peace, you know. But what happens? The mind, <laughs> after some time, you're like, get me out of here. <laughs> you want to have some relationship. It's a relief to get away from all the noise and the aggravation and the, and the disturbance. But that's not realization. That's not your ideal situation. It's a negative thing. You, if you're in the hospital, you know, you have some accident or something. Say you break your leg. So you're in traction, you know, and, and it's, it's a, you know, and all you're thinking about, oh, God, you know, when am I going to get out of here? You know, when can I get cured from this, 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 this uh, disability now? You have to be in there for, I don't know, weeks, whatever it is. And so that's your goal in life. You're just dreaming of that. And finally the day comes, you know, where you can walk, you can come and hobble out and say, all right, great, you know. But what do you do? You just sit down on the curb and say, no, now I'm out of the hospital. My life is perfect. No, you start taking up your old relationships and your activities. So it's like that. If you understand, which is basic understanding, which millions of people don't understand, that this life is full of suffering. You, no matter how you may enjoy a little bit, it eventually ends in disease and old age 
you know, and death. That's not enjoyable. And what's really heavy is that it happens all over again. Birth, old age, disease, and death. Does it sound like fun? No, but that's always in the background. That's the reality everyone comes to, right? So anyone intelligent, so, well, okay, understanding I'm pure spirit, let me see if I can get liberated from this physical bondage and all of this that goes with it. Birth, old age, disease, and death. But if you don't take up bhakti and, and cultivate that original relationship with the Supreme Lord and the enjoyer in, in the spiritual world, then your endeavor will fail. Whatever you think you attain, this vimukta manina, a very important phrase in that verse, thinking you're liberated. Now I'm liberated. I'm in, I'm in the, uh, the sensory deprivation tank. Nothing will ever bother me. But that's pretty stupid. You know, you've got to come out of there eventually, right? Take up your life. <laughs> so that's what happens. All right, I've got to have some kind of relationship, something as you come down from that. But if you practice bhakti yoga and you really and cultivate your relationship with Krishna, then that liberation comes as a byproduct. Liberation means you're not attracted at all to anything material. The knots are cut. Yet This is a great verse that probably would quote. It's the inst- uh, one of the instructions near the end of the instructions of Sanat Goswami. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> the, sana- the, the four Kumaras, Sanat Kumara. Uh, to Maharaj Pritu. We just read a few chapters earlier. So he says there that uh, because the, these, these attachments, we build them up in a lifetime. It's a very simple science. What is the mechanism of reincarnation? It's the subtle body. It's the mind, you know. And of course the karma, there's, there's, there are uh, higher beings who are putting us in just the right place. But, but on our part, we're cultivating a certain consciousness during this lifetime, isn't it? A set of desires and identifications, fears, all of this stuff. And it's in the mind. It may not be accessible, it may be in the subconscious, but it's in there. And when this bo- the gross body eventually gives, it, it gives up, in other words, it's a big machine, machines eventually break down, it's called disease and death, then the body, this, this body uh, dies, but the subtle body goes on. And that's the template, if you will, for the next gross body you're going to get in. It's, it's just planned out. The, the higher powers, the demigods, Krishna, super soul, they know exactly where, was, where we're going. You know, it's, it's all planned out. And then you start over again. May be a human body, may not be a human body, depending on the, the, how, how grievously you sinned and a whole mix of things. In this age, probably not human body. You know, it's described in great, grievous sins re- result in being sent down. You don't die, but you have to come all the way back up again. So that, all those unfulfilled desires, you know, so you're given a body where maybe you continue those desires, but you also have to suffer for your karma. It's a very complicated affair, but it's all there in the mind. So the key in any yoga process, it's the mind. What consciousness are we cultivating in this lifetime so that we'll get the best next body? The best, best, best next body is a spiritual body. Is a, is a body t- suitable to serve Krishna in the spiritual world. Our original body, Swarup, Siddhi. Swarup means your actual form. Not this form of flesh and blood, but the spiritual form with spiritual senses, spiritual mind, spiritual activities, and everything. You know, not what the Mayavadis say, that you, lo- you lose all that. There's no variety. We chant every morning. Sometimes we forget the meaning. You know, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschata Desha Tarini. Srila Prabhupada came to the West, and this particular mantra, he wrote it when he was in, in, in New York. Uh, it says, uh, Namaste Saraswati Devi, that describes his relationship with his spiritual master, Bhaktivedanta Saraswati Thakur. Gauravani Pracharine, very important phrase. He's preaching the words of Lord Chaitanya, the instruction of Lord Chaitanya, as given by. You know, uh, we, uh, you, you receive in the Chaitanya Charitamrita from his own guru, of course. He's getting and from Chaitanya Charitamrita, the writings of the Goswamis. Those are all the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Plus, of course, the Shikshastika, his actual written words. So that's what he's preaching. And by doing that, and showing example and traveling and doing everything he did, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desha Tarine. We're being delivered, Tarine, from Nirvishesha, means the impersonal understanding of the Absolute. Nirvishesha means no details. Can you imagine? You know, a spiritual society, no pictures, no deities, you know, and, and, and no pastimes, nothing like that. 
Just philosophy. You're the spirit. You're pure spirit. You're pure spirit. You understand? You're pure spirit. Tattva Masi. I'm that. I'm. No. Nirvishesha and Shunyavadi. Shunyavadi is voidism. Nirvishesha or the uh, Shankaracharya's preaching is not just void. There is one reality, Brahman. We're part of that one reality. We forgot. When we become full of knowledge, we can regain our position as Brahman. Just like the original Brahman. Brahman is Brahman. You know? But there's not just Brahman. There's Parabrahman. And then there's all the other Brahmins. Parabrahman is the Supreme Spirit. That's Krishna. We're individual Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi. But our proper role is one of service. So, understanding that, as Prabhupada says, one has to realize the super soul, or the Paramatma, the Supreme Personality of God. Uh, but when you become too materially attached, you take woman to be everything. You take material uh, sense gratification to be everything, headed by sex life. And... We're, we're surrounded by it. That's, that's the culture, so-called culture, that we live in. So it's not easy to get free of it. Uh, then, this is the basic principle, principle of material attachment and the basic principle of the illusion and the bondage of the spirit soul. So, all of this remains theoretical until we take, uh, we take up the process even a little bit. And this is the, the, one of the, you know, part of the great gift of Lord Chaitanya is that the process he gave, first of all, is available to anyone. Anyone. There's no restriction of time, place, or person. Anyone can chant Hare Krishna for free. You know, the highest gift is being given out for free. People don't recognize it as such, but it is. And as soon as you chant, seriously, with, with, with a little bit of concentration, of course, even if you don't have any concentration, it's benefiting you enormously. But to really start feel the the, the bliss, the, 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 the you know, chanting in kirtan, getting absorbed in the holy name, then you get a little taste, a little, yeah, and, and, and hopefully that leads you to investigate the process and get more of a, spirit, uh, a philosophical foundation for it. Why is that? And, and the thing is, you know, even us Westerners, late starters, I mean, I know, I, there's very few who've been practicing maybe from birth or understood, uh, after so many weird things, you know. Luckily, I think all of the, you know, we didn't destroy ourselves with drugs and all of the craziness in the 60s, 70s, and 80s and everything. Uh, so we had some brain left, and we were fortunate to come in contact. We had some background, maybe in Bhakti, we don't know exactly how. But here we are, and so uh, we have no previous qualification. You know, what was my previous qualification? I didn't have any. <laughs> A human being, maybe. Uh, but because of the mercy of, you know, Lord Chaitanya inspiring his representative, uh, Srila Prabhupada, and of course Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, coming in dreams, you know, the Prabhupada, you know, take sannyas, take sannyas, encourage him to leave. Pra- Prabhupada, there's, there's this pastime. You remember Mullah Prakriti's book? Where, you know, Prabhupada was, uh, was thinking, uh, crying, you know, my, my spiritual master why has given me this impossible task. Just imagine sitting there in Vrindavan, you know, getting elderly in your mid-60s now, you know, chanting, perfectly situated by, by the, the, the tomb or the samadhi of Rupa Goswami and, and Radha Damodar Temple, you know. But Prabhupada, being such a super faithful disciple, you know, and his god brothers really didn't take it up, you know, it's up to him. And he knows his spiritual master wants him to preach in English, and this means going to the West by this point. And so, uh, you know, he, he, he got encouragement because he would preach everywhere, you know, to, to write, a, write books rather than the magazine. He was preaching through the magazine, the, the uh, Back to Godhead. It wasn't like it is today, 64 pages, full color, and you see, I come every morning with one. No, it was a, f- a few pages, I don't know, 12 pages, maybe, of like newsprint, you know, but, but it was a magazine. It came out at least monthly. And he was preaching in English, you know, doing his thing. But a friend said, you know, the books, if you are pr- able to print some books, they'll last longer. People will really, you know, take it. And Prabhupada took that as his spiritual master's instruction, you know. And he put so much effort into producing the, the first five. I have a set. Maybe I'll bring them over one day. I have an, a set, one of those original sets that he had of Bhagavatams. It's amazing how they've held up. The quality of the paper is incredible. They're over f- they're 50 years old. I'm sorry, 60 years old. Print, the first one was printed in 1960. And uh, the papers, you know, it's pretty thick paper. But, 
But the, you, you, you know, the, the effort that went into producing those, he had no money, he had to beg the money, print the first one, and he used the first volume to get donations for the second one, and finally, <laughs> three volumes, you know. And he said later, he put everything in there that he could, you know, because he didn't really know, at least externally, what would happen. He would, get, you know, be able to print so many books. But once he had those books, he felt he had the ammunition. He could actually undergo this impossible mission. Mission impossible. Talk about mission impossible. You know, elderly man, you know, great soul, in the form of a man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with no money and no real friend. He couldn't fly. You know, he'd take a boat. And he had to beg that passage from a pious lady. Finally, She didn't want to do it. She said, oh, you're just going to die over there. You know, he's 69 years old, 68. So he, he, he had a sit-in. He sat down on <laughs> in front of her office and was chanting Hare Krishna for hours and hours and hours till she agreed to see him, you know. <laughs> Finally he said, okay, Swamiji. And so she gave him this free passage. Uh, the pious man and his wife, actually, the captain and his wife with him, and, you know, Janmashtami happened at sea, at sea. You know, you ever, you've been to Janmashtami, big festival. So Prabhupada's uh, observing it, give a little speech, he cooked some prasada and gave it to the captain and his wife. And he bought a set of books for 20 bucks now. He had $20 to go to America. <laughs> and then seven rupees or whatever, 12 rupees, whatever. And then, you know, the sea, the, the, I, I, you know, I, I don't do well on, on these boats. It, it probably got very sick. He had two heart attacks on the way over. And then he, he thought, if I have a third heart attack, it's all over. I'm, you know. So in the dream, Krishna says, don't worry, don't worry. I take, I've taken charge of this boat. He saw him rowing the boat, you know. And from then on, it was, a, it was very calm. Atlantic Ocean doesn't get calm in, 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 the, in the fall. It's a, the hurricanes are blowing. It's the same hurricane season. He came in September, August, September. And so, but it was a calm. The, the, the wife said, could you please come back with us, Swamiji? Because I, it was the calmest crossing we've ever had, you know. <laughs> Krishna took charge. Anyway, the rest is history. But the determination... You know, to give us this knowledge, eventually resulting in this purple we just read. You know, the books came out gradually. And why? Because we're, we're uh, suffering. We're all suffering. This is the, the nature of a real Vaishnav. Paradukha duki. The politicians like to say that, I feel your pain. But it's, it's a sham. You know, they really don't. You know, and it's proved because they always cheat when they get in, <laughs> you know. I mean, sometimes they try to help somewhat, you know, but to, re but to really, you know, put oneself in, at risk in trying to help people, you know, like Vishuddha Prabhupada did. So that's the nature, just like Pallad Maharaj, all the great preachers, Je Prabhupada quoted Jesus Christ, I was ready to sacrifice himself for God, you know, to preach God consciousness. So the result is that the books that Prabhupada wrote and everything he said, everything he did was full of very spiritual power because he was undergoing so much austerity for it. And he got, he was empowered by Krishna. This is the meaning of Shakti Abhish, invested with Shakti, about. So it comes out in every word of his purports. So the basic principle of material attachment is sex life. It grows from that. And in that condition, if one is overwhelmed with that the consciousness, you, know, you, you're, you can't uh, have any self-realization. There are 180 degrees opposite. Quotes uh, Lord Rishabdev's famous verse, Mahatsevam Dvaramaha Vimuktes Tamal Dvaram Yoshitang Sangi Sangam. By serving the Mahatmas, this is very important. How do we get the spiritual strength to practice Krishna consciousness? By serving the great souls, beginning with hearing from them. Prabhupada said, it's an appropriate. That's the first and the most important service. Hearing in the right mood, which is very receptive, it's called shushu shro, ardent hearing or submissive or reception, Prabhupada called it. So, that opens the door to liberation, and through bhakti. Mahatsevam dwaram ahavimuktes, but tamal dwaram, the door to darkness and suffering, is, is, is uh, opened by too much association with people who are too much attached to sex. You know, whoever you associate with, you pick up their mood. You know, this is, all the parents know that. They want to know who their kids are hanging out with, right? <laughs> uh, which is very good. So, uh, if one associates with Mahatmas, his path of liberation is opened, you know. So that's what this, this institution is all about. He's giving a chance to associate with Prabhupada and followers of Prabhupada. You know, you associate with them everything here, you know, the, the deities, how we worship the deities, uh, the, the, the procedures, those prayers we've been given, 
he didn't write this, the Guru Bhashtaka, but he gave it to us, insisted we, we get up and sing it every morning. So it's all a reflection of uh, Prabhupada's uh, honing. You know, it didn't start out like that. There were no deities, no temples, you know. Gradually he established everything. And it's a complete pr uh, process. And these, these classes are an essential part of it. You know, Prabhupada, Prabhupada uh, understood that perfectly. Good, right there in the beginning. What is it? Nachtapraja uh, Badushu Nityam Bhagavata Seviya. That verse I quote. Nityam Bhagavata Seviya. You know, first of all, what's the result? Nashta prayeshu, but by, by the previous verse, Krishna in the heart, when we're hearing properly, he destroys all the inauspicious things. The anartas and they're called the badras is the same thing, inauspicious, unwanted things. The attachments, the lust, the greed, the anger, the fear, all of that is in our consciousness, in our heart, and it completely blocks our desire for self-realization. So, but if we're able to bring ourselves to hear properly, then Krishna in the heart, he cleanses that away. It doesn't happen all at once, generally. There's a process, an art in the vritti. And so the second verse, which is the one I always recite at the beginning of class, it talks about this uh, nityam bhagavata sevya, which Prabhupada explains in the purport, two bhagavats. Bhagavat means in relationship to Bhagavan. So one bhagavat is, of course, the book Bhagavat, and otherwise known as Srimad Bhagavatam. The other bhagavat is the, is the, is the servant of the Bhagavatam, the servant of Bhagavan, the great devotee. The Prabhupada is called the Maha Bhagavat. Not just a devotee, but a great devotee. So that's, that's another sin for Mahatmas. By serving them, especially through hearing and ser other services in the right mood, then that opens the door to liberation. Why? Because we get inspired to become self-realized, God-realized. That inspiration is all important. That's the that's the the jigyasa in Atatul Brahma jigyasa. This is a phrase at, at the very beginning of the Vanta Sutra. That now, being a human being, you should inquire into the absolute truth. Where did everything come from? Who am I? Why am I suffering? What is this world? If those questions don't arise, then you're no better than an animal. So this, so so that's what uh, the association with the great devotees is. We become interested in those questions. We ask the right questions, and of course. The, the, the great devotee, he makes other devotees because he can't be in all places at all once, you know. So the, other, the, the devotees who are following, they can also inspire you with that inquisitiveness to open the books and question, who am I? What, what's the ultimate goal of life? Is there a way out of this confusion? You know, can I actually reach a state of, of, of happiness that won't end? That won't be crushed by, by time? You know? That just that question alone can bring you into the soul, and you, that's what it means. Opens the door. It doesn't give you self-realization immediately, but it opens the door where you can enter and and develop it. So here we have these these either or. I like that phrase. I think there was a book written by Kierkegaard called Either Or. He was a he was a serious Christian, and he was you know talking about either either sinful life and degradation and suffering or the Christian life. You know. It's, we have a lot of either ors. I mean, this verse is either or. <laughs> either you're going to associate with great devotees, you know, and open your door to auspicious life and liberation, or you'll just go with the flow, you know, and associate with ordinary materialists and suffer like anything. So that's that's constantly be given to us. Uh, so th this is being spoken to King Prachadabharsha to cure him of his attachment to these sacrifices with the aim of going to the heavenly planets. See, the whole thing develops with your aspiration. This is what the advertisers know. If we can just plan a desire in the heart, they may not do it, they may not act on it right away, but it's in there. And next time they want to go buy a soda, they think, yeah, I really want a Coke. You know, I don't want a Pepsi, because that they planted a desire. And then once, they, once you experience it, oh yeah, it's pretty good. And before you know it, you know, 10,000 Cokes later, you know, <laughs> you become an addict and you get diabetes problem, whatever, you know. So they don't care about you. The people who are planting those desires, they're just out to exploit. You know, somehow or other they try to convince you we're your friend, we have your best interest in mind, you know, buy this, you know. But they're not. So that's the great difference. The, the devotees really, really have your interest in heart. The genuine devotees. This is the paradukha dukkhi. Paradukha dukkhi means the, f the empathy for the, for the suffering and the pain of, of people. And, and especially from the platform of it, I'm not suffering. 
because I'm fixed in Krishna content. This is Pallad's famous verse. I'm not disturbed, O Lord. Because I'm, I'm with you. You're across the river, Vaitarani. You're, you're Nishingadev, Lord Nishingadev. He's, you know, completely fixed transcendentally. I'm with you, and any time I want, I can chant your glories and drown my consciousness in an ocean of happiness. Even in the midst of a boiling pot of oil, which his father put him in, tried to kill him. Couldn't kill him. You know, so many other ways. Can you imagine? Because that, that's the strength of the pure devotion. The mind can be fixed on Krishna even in the most difficult circumstance. After all, we're all moving toward old age, disease, and death. You know, we, have to, we have two choices. We can, we can die prematurely or we can die after debilitating illness. Right? Some accident, whatever, you know, people die at any age, so we don't really know. But he, neither of those is really very attractive, is it? <laughs> But that's our destination. Anything else we do is just, you know, in the material sense, it's a distraction. It's Maya's trick to make us forget that. Pashana being a pashati. Even though, you know, you don't live very long. I remember the first time uh, someone died who I knew. I was a kid. You know, my grandmother died. And it was a, it was a, it was a shock. You don't think, you know, you think this is the people I know and they'll always be around. And suddenly she died of cancer or whatever, you know. And I was just like, you know, I didn't get realization, self-realization, or I didn't have that environment, you know. But it was a, it was a new thing. But it lasted all of maybe half an hour, you know. And then I was off playing my games and doing, you know, isn't it? And that's material life, you know. We see these horrible things happen, you know, and uh, it's a shock, and it may cause a lot of fear, may do, you know. But then, you know, we try to forget it, you know, by getting absorbed in material sense gratification, it's gross and subtle which is Maya's trick, and it keeps everything going like that. So we want to we become uh, realized and stay realized and act on the platform of self-realization and end this whole uh, period of our time, which could be billions of years, when we've just been recycling around and around and around and actually go back home, back to God. So, that, so the, we're doing the right thing, hearing the Bhagavatam. This is the, this is the, the proper thing to do at this time and this place. <laughs> And so, Prabhupada is giving us this great uh, instruction here. So, the first step is to know yourself as spirit, soul apart from the body, which changes everything. You know, everybody dies, nobody dies. A, everybody dies, nobody dies. Wake up and wake, wake up and open your eyes. It's in the Gita. Antabanta hime deha, nitya sokta shirinaha. All these bodies that you see, all the soldiers, they're all coming to an end. Soon. You don't think anyone's going to get out alive, except you pound of us. Uh, but the soul never dies. That, and as soon as you, you realize that, that changes everything. I myself am not going to die. So then how do I plan for the time when you know, this body is gone? You know? In other words, it changes your whole perspective. Suddenly it's long. You, you're, thinking, you're thinking of eternity rather than just a few years. You know? So that's the first thing. And then to understand we're not mamai bangso jiva loka jiva bhuta sanatana. We're eternal fragmental parts. Eternally fragmental parts of Krishna. But we're qualitatively one, which is very encouraging. After all, he's anandamayo. He's full of, of bliss. We're meant to be full of bliss all the time, but I, 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 I can feel pretty confident to say that no one in this room is always 100% full of bliss at all times. <laughs> There's always ups and downs, and the happiness we do uh, experience may not be characterized as bliss, maybe just a little tickle, you know. So... <laughs> We're not living, we're not living the, life, uh, the pure life of spirit. In other words, we have to go from here to there. There's a, there's a path to go to the, to the point of regaining our original nature as part and parcel of Krishna, as servants, and reflecting his nature, you know, his qualities in full, or at least the ones we are eligible to, to uh, have. And one of which is Ananda Maya. Ananda Maya Bhyasa. Ananda means bliss, and Maya means full of, made of bliss. Don't we want that? Anandam Bhudivardhanam is right there in the Shikshastika. Purnamitas Vardhanam Padam Padam At every step we can taste the full nectar we're always anxious for. Even when you're 80 years old you can still taste that nectar. It's not, it's not being controlled by your senses. You know? If your mind is fixed on Krishna that's the, that, then, you're, then you, can, you can taste that bliss. Prabhupada showed that. So 
uh, if one, but if one is to the present civilization, Prabhupada is always concerned about the, the whole world. Both men and women are allowed to be attracted to one from the very beginning of life. So, you know, it's, it's gotten a lot worse since I've been around. You know, at least in, in, in grade school, you know, you didn't see gross sense gratification going on, sex life, you know. The advent of the internet, the phones in everybody's pocket, it's utter disaster. I mean, I was a normal little kid when I grew up, I didn't, you know. And I remember, hey, maybe we can go and, and, and steal one of those Playboy magazines. You know, that type of thing. Play, I don't know if you know what Playboy was. It's a pornography, but kind of totally softcore compared to what they have today. But the point was, you know, that was, but you really had to f go and find it. It's not that you had it in your pocket, you just press two buttons and you can see the most gross pornography. You can imagine the temptations. Poor kids, you know, growing up in this age. It's disaster. Utter disaster. And Prabhupada is 100% right here. From the beginning of life, from, you know, young age, it's available. And, that's, and therefore, because of this, they're unable to come to the platform of self-realization or even understand or desire self-realization, see the need for it. You see? It doesn't come up. It's not going to be taught in the schools. Is it going to be taught at home? You know? It's on, it's, it's on your phone, but you're not going to push the right buttons to get to that site. You know, the Hare Krishna site. So, it's, uh, this is the civilization we live in. And, and without civilization, they suffer the greatest loss in the human life, human form of life. We have to be convinced of that. And here we are, we've been given the idea and the inspiration to at least take it somewhat seriously. So we have to become really serious and, 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 and prosecute Krishna consciousness as it's been given to us. It's no secret. 16 rounds a day, four regular principles, you know, molding your life in such a way that you get rid of, you know, temptations. The hard, some of the hardest part is exactly this, giving up bad association. Because they may be your best friends. Hey, Billy, what happened to you? Come on, let's go party. You know? And uh, you have to say, no, I don't do that anymore. And oftentimes, you have to cut them free. Mahatsevan Varanava, Satsanga Tyagahe Vaishnamachar. This is the first, first uh, Lord Chaitanya says, what's the characteristic of a Vaishnava? One line, Prabhupada says. This is the first thing. Asa Sangha uh, Tyaga, to give up strongly the association of the Asat, those who are materialists and simply bad influence. That's very important. But you're not going to give up and you take the association of Vaishnavas. That's what the whole Sangha, you know, there's two words that often are confused. We, there's the word Sangha, and the word sangha, with the H, you know, that aspirated. Sangha is what happens when people get together. That's called association, right? And that's commonly what we understand, satsanga, satsanga. Sangha is the group, is the actual, uh, you know, group that you associate with. I'm in the sangha of devotees, means that I, you know, hang out with devotees all the time. So, the Prabhupada created that. That's what this society means. It's an internet society. Without the society, we're, we're easy pickings from Maya. We have to alone. We can't do it alone. You know. So Prabhupada created this, and we should take advantage of it. And then this brilliant, you know, wonderful analogy here: thinking of women always within one's heart is tantamount to lying down with a woman in a valuable bedstead. Because imagine it. You know, that's going to be the thought that when you leave this body. And then what's going to happen? You know, you're going to come back as, uh, if you're a human being, if you're lucky, you know, and again, suffer. So, th so what to think about? To think, of, think about Krishna. If you think about, be able to think about Krishna, uh, you know, uh, at, all, at all hours, 24 hours a day, then your path back to God is assured. So cultivating that knowledge. Now, as was brought up uh, by, by good old friend Vijay, about we need to be captivated by Krishna. <laughs> He's the most captivating He's infinite, right? That means he's infinitely beautiful. He's infinitely witty. He's infinitely, the dancing is, 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 is the highest possible, you know. Everything about him is attractive. And he's our best friend. Bhakta Surit, Surit Satam, he says. No, he says, Bhaktaram Yagitapasam Sarva Loka Maheshadam Suridam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatva Mam Shantam How to attain peace, this peace formula, very end of the fifth chapter. One has to understand, one who understands these things, that I am the enjoyer of all sacrifices and austerities. People are performing sacrifices and austerities at every moment. Their work, everything like that. 
So the fruit belongs to Krishna. You know, that's what he's saying. Savaloka uh, Maheshadam, the supreme uh, controller of all the planets, everything. And then, Suddhidam Sarvabhutanam, the best friend, not just uh, a mitra or a saka. There's different f- words, a bandhu, just like there's many words in English for friend. But the most important, you know, is the bosom buddy, the one who's ready to sacrifice for you in any circumstance. There's no material friend like that. There's always a limit, right? Listen, you've been sleeping here for three months. I can't put, put you up anymore, Prabhu. You know, that there always comes a limit in the material side. But there's no limit. Krishna's been with us as a super soul since time immemorial, trying to give us good advice, giving us, you know, our intelligence and our memory and everything, looking at. But we're look, not looking at him. We're not thinking of him. We're external, trying to enjoy the fruits of the material tree. You know. So, but he's the friend. And when, as it said, uh, Krishna, when you're hearing his his, his talks, uh, glorification from the right source and with the right in your right mood, then he within the heart he cleanses away all of these anartas, you know the material desire, the karma, the, the, the weakness of heart where you can't can't do it. He said, now I think I can do it. So all of that is happening, and uh, so so recognizing Krishna as our best friend and thinking of him, uh, that's just the opposite. That means your path back to God. Otherwise, you know, the state of your, your mind, it doesn't matter if you're with a woman or if you're just completely thinking constantly of it, it's going to have the same effect. And uh, the heart is the bedstead, the most valuable bedstead. So, this is a, what my little thoughts on this verse. Any comments, questions from abroad? Or we have one local one here. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the nice class. Hare Bhagavan. Um, so, um, I like I've been listening to the. Uh, I think I I think it would be safe. You can just take that down where you talk. Yeah, I'll be alright. Yeah. So in these uh, verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Turn it up. Turn it up a little. Turn it up. God, I can hear, but go ahead. Yeah. So in these verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, we have been hearing about um, that um, too much attachment to opposite sexes. Uh, disastrous. It's yeah. Disastrous. Um, but I'm trying trying to think from a bigger perspective that um, that um, the real problem is the forgetfulness of our association or our connection with Krishna, right? So the real the real what? The, the, the real problem or the real um, source source of our yeah. difficulty is that we've forgotten Krishna. Yeah. Okay. So and. That it's actually uh, the the symptom of that is actually manifesting in different forms, like attachment to opposite sex, or attachment to being glorified, or apa- or s- or having yeah, our ego, or okay. all of that. So you're wondering what is the cause and what is the effect. Here it sounds like the cause is too much attached to women. But you're saying the cause is forgetting Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then, y- but then you have to ask, why did we forget Krishna? It is described Bhayam Dvitiya Bhandavesha Dakshad Ishara Petasya Viparhiya Asmati in 11th Canon, 9 Yogendras. So he's, just, so he's describing the source of fear because as soon as we lose our connection with Krishna, forget our correct connection, we can't destroy it, it's still there, but we forget about it, then we become fearful. Suddenly, you know, it's, there's this dangerous world and there's so many dangers in it and the fear arises. But he says that Isha to Petasya, turning away from the Isha, from the Lord, we become absorbed in this external world, the Vitiya, Abhivesha. So, the dualities of this world. And uh, we naturally become attached. That original prema turns into kama, in con- contact with the modes of nature. This is explained in, in the third chapter. In other words, we have this desire to engage and to enjoy, you know, and even that love, you know, is come become contaminated by karma. It really is a uh, desire to preach our own senses. So uh, the, the, the original cause is our unwillingness to serve. Now how that arises, we don't know. How, why we would turn away from Krishna. You know, this is a mystery. So we, ha- we have a nice letter or essay by Prabhupada describing that. Ko but the, but, but the basic principle is, this is the part of the free will of the living entity. Krishna has unlimited free will. Whatever he wants to do, gets done, right? 
uh, immediately. So we're part and parcel, Mamai Vangsha Jiva Loka, we're Anksha. We have a minute quantity of free will. Krishna has endowed us with that. He's expanded. Eko Bahu Syam, you know, so that he could enjoy this loving exchange. Love has to be freely given. He has to give us free will so that, so that we can you know, voluntarily serve him with love. <coughs> Otherwise, Prabhupada famously said, he doesn't want Krishna, Krishna doesn't want us to love him at the point of a revolver. That's not love, right? <laughs> So he's given you can you cannot love me, and then you'll have to come to this world and you'll get attached to all these things. And that's what's happened. So the original cause, you may say, is is you know, the the mystery of why we were turned away from Krishna, but we did try to compete with him. And then Prabhupada said in the ninth cano, the great revelation, uh, you become Brahma. You know, as your first birth. Obviously not all Brahmas go back to Godhead. They some get <laughs> Some come down here and you can take take birth, as Prabhupada would famously say, at least a thousand times, take birth in a worm and stool. In other words, you can become extremely degraded, even from that high position. So, uh, the, the, uh, then the, the, the crow and tall part of the crow and tall uh, letter means, don't worry about it. Don't, you know, don't spend your time trying to figure out how you got here or when you came here. But take the process that's been given, tried and true, comes down from Krishna to all the parampara, to how you can get back, back home, back to guided. And so that simply means, you know, turning again toward the same person. That's the rest of the verse. Tanmayato, maya energy has, has taken over and, and, and us, you know, the conditioned soul. Buddha, one has to be intelligent. Abhajetam, and worship that very Isha again, Krishna. How? Bhakti Aikayeshin, with one-pointed selfless devotional service. And then very important last words, Guru Deva Tatma, regarding one's spiritual preceptor as one's very self and worshipful Lord. That connection is very important, you know, to empower us. So uh, a lot of it's there in answer it's in that verse in that verse. Is that we we've turned away, become absorbed, and for who knows how many ages, you know, lifetimes of Brahma, we've been going from body to body to body, trying to avoid the, avoid, uh, enjoy this external world, suffering like anything, the dualities. And so the cure is to once again turn to the Isha and perform the devotional service and uh, turn our attraction, our love, our affection toward him again. So that's about the second one, that one. Anything else? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. And then we'll go to the peanut gallery. Yeah. No, no, okay. Raj, do you have something there? Okay. from Vishnu Priya, Devi Dasi in Canada. Uh, very nice class with practical examples. Hare Krishna. I visited your temple in 2014 and I virtually associate with your devotees and always feel happy. And Prabhu mentions my spiritual master's name, Gunagrahi Das Goswami. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gunagrahi Swami Ki. Jai! <laughs> Do you have something, Prabhu? Okay, yeah. So, um... Hare Krishna. Uh, my question is similar to uh, his question, uh, but so I have uh, personally observed that um, the uh, when we are uh, in association of devotees or when when we are trying to advance our spiritual practice, it helps us to uh, um, give us more clarity and also uh, pa pa I will say like uh, pacify our uh, senses to some extent and. Uh, but sometimes what I have observed that uh, you become so complacent uh, in the sense about uh, the things which needs aggressiveness at times in the sense like, for, for example, uh, the world is so competitive and uh, when we are in our professional life, we really have to compete for everything, you know, uh -huh. whether it is for job or to perform in job or to go up the ladder. Uh -huh. So when the spiritual um, uh, practice is advancing or you are progressing, somehow uh, your uh, abil your your passion for for things automatically starts declining yeah material now, things now in uh, in that sense um, either it is uh, is it like uh, either you really want to you know uh, live your uh, professional goals or li live your aspirations to succeed in uh, material life or it's like a compromise you have to do or both can run at the same time <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, take it. 
You're, you're describing, uh, I think, a not uncommon, not uncommon dilemma of trying to make it in present society, which demands uh, that you become like a warrior on a, on a battlefield, you know, and you have to have all kinds of qualities that are not really conducive to bhakti, which is kind of uh, uh, ruthlessness, maybe, you know. Uh, so what, what I, what I, all I can say is that, you know, you have to, you have to see if it's not compatible. The, the, fir the first thing is you have to set priorities. And, you know, you have to realize the most important thing is your spiritual life, your self-realization. You can't make that just a hobby and expect that it, you're going to, you know, I mean, it's good. Any, any amount is good, don't get me wrong. But if you're really serious about making serious advancement or even going back to God at this lifetime, then you have to set your priorities. And if there's something in your life that is seriously blocking that, then you have to change and get a different job or, you know, uh, uh, different association. Because let's face it, you know, <coughs> I mean, if, you, if you're forced to uh, closely associate with those who are in the mode of passion and ignorance, then that's going to affect you. That's just the way it works. Especially if you can't, you know, be a devotee in that association. It's one thing to be preaching, you know, out in the street uh, and so forth. You're protected. Even if you're, you know, you're speaking to people who are in different modes. But basically, you're, as Prabhupada said, you're not getting their association. They're getting your association. It's a whole different dynamic. But if you're, you know, trying to get the favor of different people and trying to, you know, fit in, that's uh, going to definitely affect your consciousness. And as you say, you know, make a compromise, which means that you, you can't be as serious about your spiritual life. So, it, 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 I mean, I, I'm, I'm telling you from my own experience, when I joined back in the early 70s, uh, you know, the, the temples were, certain temples were established. I was fortunate to join a very nice established temple in uh, New York. And uh, there were, it was like, okay, are you going to join the high Christians? You're going to join the high Christians. You're going to move in, you know. <laughs> and and so, and at that time, there were a lot, there were enough people that they had to have a halfway house, you know. You can't just walk in and join. You have to see whether you can really meet, you know, as we used to say, cut the mustard, you know, which I think is okay. Uh, and you know, you know some some of us made it, some of it didn't. So. But and then you were there was full immersion, you know, you, from, from morning to night. There was services, there was the, the, the temple program, you know, you're definitely able to do it, and it, you were able to become established. Or some fell away; they weren't able to, you know, actually do it. But most who were that, got that far were serious. So uh, you can't turn back the clock. Most of the members of the movement, the vast majority, live outside the temple, you know, and there's a way of doing that. Uh, and still making advancement and, and being, a, 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 you know, a very advanced member of the society. But it, but it does have to do with, you know, your job and who you associate with. That, that I mean, I, 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 maybe I should let uh, Raj answer this question since he spent years <laughs> doing that. I've got the, sh the scars to show you that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would, have, from the very get-go, have emphasized you need to have daily sadhana, chanting Hare Krishna and reading Srila Prabhupada's books, and associate with it like this Vishnu Priya. She's watching classes. He's getting associated. She's in Canada, for heaven's sake. So wherever you're living in San Diego and you can't come here and have association, as much as you can associate with our temple or any of the transcendental sound vibrations from the devotees online, but you have to become strong. And then the teachings of uh, our spiritual master, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Krishna, you know, by, by work you can worship the Lord, or you don't have to change anything, you just have to add, and Lord Brahma says, the hearing, and Lord Chaitanya told the Brahman, you know, don't leave your home, you just stay here, you hear Bhagavad Gita, and you preach it, which is what yes, he's saying, yeah, the yeah. best defense is an offense. So when you become strong in your personal sadhana, your qualities will begin to manifest where people will, who are pious, be attracted to you. And you can come, you know, whatever your job is, a devotee should be the best at whatever job they work at. Because we're not working just to make a paycheck. We're working to please the devotees, the spiritual master, and Krishna. And we'll work much harder than those folks will for that eternal benefit. 
So you have to become spiritually strong by all the good advice that Vita Prabhu has said and what I'm sharing with you. Yeah. I'm really sorry we went way over time. I completely lost track. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, honey. honey. <laughs> well, as long as I didn't get any, uh, hey, from you, you know. <laughs> <laughs>